Thing, things just got real creepy. When were you here? <laughs> <laughs> and that's not a euphemism. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast. This is the show where two lifelong friends and their guests talk about all things geek. I am neither of those friends. I am the guest. I am Richard Gunther and I am joining Amos and Kent. Hey guys. Hey, what's up? Thanks for having us on. This yeah, is awesome. this is great, man. Uh, really, <laughs> really appreciate you inviting us like this. <laughs> Glad I could join. I mean, always pleasure kent doesn't usually get invites by himself at all let alone with somebody <laughs> like you know giving kent a invite plus one uh, you might be in for it tonight oh yeah it's been a while <laughs> this is this is great <laughs> how you been richard i'm doing well i'm doing well except for the fact that i missed my entry cue i was muted and scrambling to find my unmute there but uh, uh, i am again, very happy to join you screwing up the intro is not a bug it's a feature it's part of our state I, I forgot about that that is that is kind of the thing you do isn't it yeah yeah oh man oh, um, so i'm just gonna let the, let the bag out of the uh, the bag out of the hat what what <laughs> let the bag out of the cat um, um yeah the, the cat would appreciate it if you let yeah. the bag out of it so i had surgery today so if my voice is all jacked up that's why um, they went back into my back and tried to figure out why, why it was leaking, why I had a little Quasimodo lump on the back. Um, I told them if they let me keep it any longer, I was going to give it a name and an Instagram account. Uh, and uh, apparently nobody liked that idea. So they went ahead and tried to try to remove it and fix, fix the hole in my spine that's leaking liquid out in, in, uh, into my body. Yeah. So that's my that's fun for the day. How are you guys doing? Probably a good thing. Uh, yeah. Better than you? I think I, I hold on. <laughs> did, did they fix it? Like, is it, is it better now? Well, you, uh, I mean, it's all bandaged up right now. I can't even see it. So. All right. So, so fingers crossed, I guess. Um, like, I mean, let's hope. Um, well, I guess I'm doing better than you. I, I, I was a little upset earlier that I had a sneezing fit and, and blown my nose every two seconds, but, uh, sounds like I'm, I'm actually better off than you are. So yeah. long time yeah. listeners of this show will know that when Kent has a sneezing fit, it is like a nuclear snot explosion. I think is how Charlie folds put it. On a, on <laughs> yes, a, that, that is the terminology. One of the, one of the early <laughs> episodes of the show, Charlie folds described his first experience with Kent's uh, nuclear snot explosions. And these are, the, these are like seismic events. Like you can, you can get a Richter scale and measure how bad his sneezing fits are when they happen. So I don't, I don't want to downplay it, but I'm, uh, that's, that's really where you're at. Yeah, and well, in the event that he described was in second or third grade, I yeah. think, and uh, my schnoz has only gotten larger since then. So, uh, yeah, it's not a good sight. <laughs> uh, Richard, how's your health? <laughs> well, I think the last time I was on the show, I had a cold, and um, pretty much any time that I spend time with our friends' kids at Christmas, I get whatever they're carrying. So I'm sick again. So, you know, you might think that I'm always sick. It's only when I come on your show. Oh, my God. All right. Well, you're going to have to text us one time like, hey, guys, I'm healthy today. No, <laughs> we'll don't, just, don't do that. that that'll be the time you. he gets run over by a bus in the parking lot while texting. Us yeah. Or yeah. Let's don't not tempt things. But, you know, I'll, <laughs> I'll do it like at the last minute. Quick, let me on the show. I, yeah. I have a voice tonight. Uh, we're about halfway through the show right now. We're getting a call in from Richard. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take the call. <laughs> you said any time, guys. You said any time. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, nope. That's true. That's true. Um, no, that's, this is great. Um, glad to have Richard on the show. It's been many months since you were last on. Um, I yeah. in, in fact, have you even been on the show since we did the live event? Y yes, because yeah. he was he was our guest for my birthday episode, which was a few weeks after the live event. Ah, right, right. I think that might have been the last time. Yeah, back in I April. think so. That's sad. Yeah. But see, I see Richard all the time now, so I'm like just getting accustomed to it. Yeah. So speaking of which, like we've been hinting around about this project, this top secret project that you've had going on uh is it time to fully explain what's going on with that we spoilers <laughs> <laughs> um yes yeah go ahead richard well i that was actually in 
kind of my closing remarks. But yeah, so, you know, uh, for literally years now, Amos has been bugging me that he and I need to do a podcast together. And Mm. anybody who listens to my show, Home On, knows that I don't get my show out often enough. And I don't get my show out often enough because I'm meticulous about its production and it takes me a long time to do it. And I really don't have a whole lot of spare time. So I've been saying, no, I don't have time. I don't have time. And then he tempted me with this idea that, yeah, but you don't have to do anything but show up. Watch, and watch had, the TV show you want to watch anyway. And yeah, show exactly. Up and, talk about it. And, and he had this great lore of... <laughs> Game of Thrones. Come watch Game of Thrones for the first time. And talk. And, yeah. And and then I seasoned it heavily with a, a dosage of Jenny Josephson. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And I am not going to turn down an opportunity to talk about anything with Jenny because I adore Jenny. She's awesome. And so I am so pleased that Amos and Jenny and I are just today you just put it the feed out there today i believe releasing yep. our teaser episode for let's talk about thrones and we're looking at this from three different perspectives she has read the books i think multiple times and is rewatching amos has watched the show i think multiple times and is rewatching mm. and i am watching for the first time and have read nothing mm. And I feel like an idiot when these two talk about what's going on. So essentially half, because, half the show is me and Jenny talking around things we can't tell Richard. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because that's one of the other things is that we're keeping it spoiler three, spoiler mm. free. So if anybody is interested in watching Game of Thrones for the first time, like I am, then they'll be able to follow along and not have to worry about any serious spoilers along the way. Yep. I'm I am so excited about this. We already have a bunch of episodes in the can so that we'll be able to start releasing on a regular cadence. And and I'm just I'm thrilled. I love it. Oh, and by the way, let's talk about, you know, that that I think that's coming to be something of a brand mm. these days. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's there's a few other let's talk about. You know, there's let's talk about Star Wars, it's been around for a few years now, a pretty good show. Um and then another one. Oh, just, yeah, um, it, I think uh, Jenny's on that. I, I, I'm I'm pretty sure she was uh <laughs> she, she's on that one on a regular basis. Um, and then speaking of Jenny, there's another one that she does. It's a uh, oh, what is it? Let's talk about um celebrations, right? Cheers! Oh, cheers! cheers. Yes, cheers! Yeah. Yes, cheers! <laughs> yes, and I will tell you, like that is the least likely show that I would have thought about rewatching, but it is so much fun to watch the show and then listen to her and her husband, both of whom work in this industry Mm -hmm. in the television and writing space and have had exposure to so much of what goes on behind the scenes on a show like that. I, I I love it. I absolutely love it. And I'm sad because I'm a little bit concerned. I don't want them to pod fade. Mm -hmm. You know, I already miss the core of what is tell it anyway. And this is kind of what they're doing as a as a quicker way of getting shows out. But we haven't had couple, we haven't had any in a while, so I'm hoping that we get them. Yeah, I'm sure we will. It's 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 so awesome, and it's, the timing of them releasing that was so perfect because just a couple of weeks prior to that, I I got Stephanie, my girlfriend, to start watching Cheers for the first time. Mm. And Cheers is one of my favorite shows of all time. By the way, the DVD full box set is available at Walmart for like thirty five dollars. Well, no streaming on Netflix. Way. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's it, that's it, amazing. It was I actually will on my list. The Netflix, it, it was on my Christmas list. That's cool. The Netflix version looks way better than any of us ever saw it on a television. <laughs> yeah. No. No kidding. Yeah. Um, yeah, but that's just a fun show. Game of Thrones is a fun show. We're doing that one. And then of course, Star Wars and let's talk about Star Wars is the entire universe, the expanded, the, the legends, the current stuff, the future stuff. It's all things Star Wars are up for grabs on that show. So, um, mm-hmm. really excited to be doing that. And, uh, when I put that tweet out there and Jenny replied, and then I used that to bait 
Richard in, I knew I had something special. So it's yeah. a, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. Hopefully it's a lot of fun for people to listen to as well. Absolutely. Yeah, hell yeah. Hey, you know what we haven't gotten to? Like what's been going on this week with you guys? Uh, I mean, there's this, this like literally or literally, literally, literally. little, little celebrated. <laughs> no, I like holiday. literally. I like literally. I like the adverb version of it. Literally. Yeah. So this literally <laughs> celebrated holiday happened in my household. <laughs> I don't know if you guys, um, have you guys even heard of this thing? Uh, Christmas? Uh, oh. yeah, I've heard about it bigly. Mm. <laughs> I, oh, and I, I, I've actually heard, of, I've heard about it muchly. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, well, good, good, good. Yeah, we did that in our house, and uh, that that pretty much dominated the week for me. Uh, how about you guys? Did you guys do anything in that regard? Um, my wife made a phone call to Santa, so he came a day early. Ah, so that we could that was spend, smart. We could spend Christmas Day relaxing because she had to go back to work on the day after. So yeah, no, that's totally uh, smart. Yeah, it's a, it's a really simple phone call too. It's I, mean, I, I was I was amazed at how quick she made it happen. Yeah. Can well, you good. share that number maybe in the show notes? That would be helpful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, just um, go ahead and throw that out. It's actually a 567-698-7672. Now, that is a toll call anywhere outside the U.S. But within the U.S., it's 567-698-7672. And uh, just leave a message on, on what day you would like your Christmas to arrive and why. Yeah. There's a joke there that I don't get. Okay. Um, <laughs> but you also <laughs> had surgery, not just this week, but today yeah yeah um again it, it this my 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 i don't want to say resolution but my goal for next next holiday season is no surgeries because this is two years in a row i've been surgery laden for the holidays and it blows yeah that sucks that totally um sucks. and now i'm not even getting the good drugs anymore because all the good drugs are starting to make me uh, uh i'm basically i'm building up a, 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 an allergy to them if you will an well, intolerance no, I was thinking that that was your excuse for uh, I don't know your your word mangling tonight. Oh well, uh, I've still got some IV fluids flowing through me right now. <laughs> I mean, I I did literally just come out of anesthesia like three hours ago. This is a, yeah, right. Th th this is you're, dedication. You're a fucking warrior. You are a warrior <laughs> for being here. This is. Hey, yeah. I'm, I'm fine as long as I don't lean back in my chair because I can't. Oh no, that that hurts bad. Don't do yeah, that. So don't, don't do that. That don't hurts do that. muchly. <laughs> so I was also Christmasing this week. And mm. as always, Christmasing kind of just destroys any semblance of normalcy that you have, right? It mm. it just turns the household upside down. It messes with your schedule. It got in the way of work for me, which is really interesting because literally two days before the Christmas break, I got a promotion. Mm. And oh, congratulations. that was crazy. Thank you. And and I'm really excited about it. I, I am literally in the job now that I I basically became an employee at my company to get. Like mm. I, I, I became an employee because I wanted to be in this position. And I'm very happy about it. I'm I'm also just overwhelmed. Like I'm stepping into something that was kind of handed to me by someone who was leaving and I have, I'm just underwater. So it's been absolutely crazy. And on top of that next week, and it's probably actually today when people are listening based on how you get episodes out. But today you want to say talk. today, assuming that today is Sunday, <laughs> I'm going on a mileage run to earn the necessary amount of miles to keep my status on Delta Airlines because I didn't have enough miles to meet that threshold from my travels this year. So I literally wow. on the last day of the year, I am flying to Atlanta and back so that I can get the miles I need. And I was planning that this week and how crazy is that that's just i like it's insane that that's so, a thing two things are you ready for this i got two things for you all right one that might be the most white people rich statement ever made on this podcast <laughs> should i tell you i'm flying first class oh, that's what i was gonna say too. And, and two if, if you ever need to burn miles why didn't you just come here i mean well, it's a lot harder the opposite end of the country Right. It's a lot harder to get to Alaska for a quick day trip 
at the end of the year than it is to say uh, Atlanta, which is I think like 550 miles away or something. So uh, like, uh, like how someday. close did you trim it? Were you like, you know, right at, you know, Atlanta minus three miles is what, what got you to the point or what? Yeah. So Atlanta and back is going to get me over the threshold and it's just, it is, it's, it's ridiculous. And the thing that's crazy about it is that they used to allow you to just, you know, buy up. Well, mm -hmm. you can buy up now, but if you buy up, it's going to cost you twice as much as it would if you just hopped on a plane and went somewhere and gave them your day. So I'm going to be editing home on in the air as I am flying to Atlanta and back next Sunday. Oh man. Damn. The, 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 some, something seems so very like, Maybe they want you to, because because every flight incurs a certain risk, at least mentally, you know. Even though it's like probably the safest way to fly or the safest way to to travel, it's more dangerous to drive to the airport than it is to fly somewhere. Right. So right. Are, they, are, are they just wanting you? Hey, if you're not willing to take the risk, you need to pay double. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know what it, it it's it's ridiculous. But oh that's man, funny. and that's not even my geeky thing of the week. Uh, okay, well, so what is <laughs> your geek now that now that you've you've made travel arrangements to maintain a status that mm. me and Kent can only dream about? This um, is his, his Richie <laughs> thing of the week. Yeah, yeah. What, what what could possibly have gone wrong that where you needed another geeky thing this week? So I have mentioned a couple times that I host a show called Home On, and we had a very cool episode that we do at the end of every year with other podcasters in the technology.fm uh, curated collection of tech podcasts. And this year I released it by creating a dupe of last year's page and putting all the new stuff into it. And I forgot to update the information about the episode itself. So I totally screwed up my podcast feed and <laughs> was just like scrambling because I go to listen to it in the morning and I'm like, wait, year two. No, this was the third. Wait, wow. Oh, no. What the fuck happened? And <laughs> then once I figure oh, no. out what happened, then I go to fix it by just changing the information for the show and changing the name of the episode in WordPress and I'm figuring mm. that fixes it all. Mm. It doesn't fix it all. Mm -hmm. So one of your guests on um, Undaunted, Daniel J. Lewis, hosts tons of information on his website about basically how you do all this stuff mm -hmm. on podcasting. And he had a really good step-by-step -step instruction guide on how to correct a misposted episode. And mm -hmm. I followed it and it fixed it. And I ended up fixing it wrong. So it literally took me three times to fix oh the episode to get it out there right. And I feel so bad for people that were actually, you know, on the feed and on time on shows because they ended up with two episodes of the show. Both mm. say fixed now for some stupid reason, <laughs> even though only the more recent one is fixed I, I fucked up so bad it pisses me off. So my oh, when when I was first doing the RSS feed for Rich Room Misery and I was still trying to figure it out and we were we actually migrated from a uh, straight feed burner to WordPress uh, to PowerPress uh, you know WordPress and all that stuff. I republished every episode and at the time it was like eighteen episodes and I hit mm -hmm. I I I did the thing I walked away from my computer while it was processing or doing whatever it was doing before I got back to my computer I get a text from Richard going what the fuck. What, what did you just do to your feed? <laughs> now, every time I screw up the feed itself, I mean, I've, I've done a few file mix ups here and there and you, it's easy to correct that with the way that our, you know, our workflow, you just replace the file literally and it, okay, it just automatically happens. Um, mm -hmm. But every time something goes wrong with the feed, I get a text from Richard saying, Hey, uh, check it. And it's only happened like two or three times. So when I'm, when I'm looking at my podcast app and it, in, you know, or at the, at the home screen on my phone and it shows, you know, pocket casts, uh, home on episode, blah, 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 with fixed in parentheses. I'm sitting there like, <laughs> oh, boy. oh boy. And of course, yeah. I'm, of course I'm at the hospital and I, I can't get decent enough reception to actually send a text. And by you the time totally I leave, I forget. Have, 
Yeah, you like, totally should have given me a dig. I but like, I mean, I no, of course. Like the the reason that I jump on that stuff if I see it on your feed is I want you to be aware of it so you can fix it quickly. And this right. is one of you know, this is like the kind of stuff that you don't know unless someone tells you. Yeah. Right? Oh, so, thank you, Jackie Hearn. Jackie Hearn just gave us a sub in the old Twitch. That's uh, twitch.tv slash Rich Woman's Re. Um, yep, appreciate awesome. it. Yeah, and one of the things about it is as as a fellow podcaster, you, you you keep an eye out on things like that. You like you see things that other people are doing because you're constantly trying to learn and do things better. And this is one of the things that I talk about on Undaunted is that constant pursuit of the better way to do it. And yep. sometimes it's a pursuit of how not to do it. <laughs> yes. So... Um, so how Kent, about you guys? Kent, uh, geeky stuff. You you did some sequencing yourself. So, uh, well, kind Ooh, of. Um, I, I provided a done, sample Amos. for someone to do some sequencing. Uh, um, how about that? No, so I got a really really cool Christmas present. Uh, so I, I've been a an amateur genealogist for the better part of my adult life. So much uh, so that we till, had to stop by that damn library when we were in Salt Lake city and it was <laughs> hot as balls for nurtacular. And we had to go in there and right. Well, that is the, the it was actually, it was actually largest cool. and most well-renowned genealogy library on the planet. Um, <laughs> yep. um, so anyway, so I have been studying my personal genealogy for quite a long time, except for the last few years. I, I misplaced the bulk of my data. It's on a hard drive somewhere and I'm still looking for oh, it. Oh wow. Uh so I've I've kind of like I guess I'm making excuses now why I'm not into it. So to get me back into it, Stephanie got me a DNA kit from ancestry.com. Uh comes in a box that looks like this. It's basically a a like a, a vial to provide a for, sample for for those of you who are only listening. It looked like a box. It looked, it looked like yeah, a big white a spot, like a big white hot spot. Oh right, yeah, because I I do still have the glare issue that I haven't fixed. Uh, yeah. So anyway, basically, it's a box with a vial and a like a sample collection bag and a box, a like a pre-addressed postage paid box to send this to Ancestry. And basically what it does is that they analyze your, your DNA and do like an, basically like an anthropological, like database matching to map where your ancestors are from. And it's, it's a project that they've been doing for several years now. It's very successful. Um, it not only it, does it provide information to the person, but it also adds to their their overall study. It's basically like a, like a, a DNA based anthropological study of like, like human migration and things like that. And, uh, this is, this is super awesome. I had to reactivate my ancestry account because it'd been so long. And, uh, but, but some of my data was still there. And so I, I started to get back into it. I had to get back in there so that I could add the, uh, the, like the number that's, that's assigned to the sample kit. So that it, once they analyze it, they can add it to my account and, uh, you know, I can see all this really cool information about my family history. So last night I provided the sample and mailed it out today. And I should, like in about a month and a half, I should have the results of that. And I, I'm really looking forward to it. That is amazing. Are you going to share with us uh, which fluid you shared for this sample? <laughs> <laughs> I purposely used the verbiage provided a sample so that <laughs> uh, yeah, so normally when you when you give a DNA sample, you're like scraping the inside of your cheek. Mm. Um, th I was surprised that that they wanted actual saliva. They wanted mm. like a quarter a teaspoon of saliva. And um, that was interesting. Uh, just basically just like spitting into this vial like five or six times. <laughs> uh, that's what she said. Um, <laughs> so a couple things on here, uh, and in the chat room says they missed it, uh, an opportunity. They should have shipped out the, uh, the, the little box in a, in a spittoon, you know, great yep. marketing yep. there. Cause everybody's going to know what that is, right? It's not just a white box. It's an actual, it's, it's a, it's an <laughs> ancestry.com spittoon. Um, and also 23 and me has a kit at Walmart that they had for sale and it was like a, I don't know, $23 kit. Right. And you go and you pick it up. 
but then you have to mail it off and pay extra when you mail it off to where it ends up being $99, which is their base price anyway. And I saw mm-hmm. that and I, was, uh, I almost fell for it. Now, the, the reason I haven't done this, uh, Ancestry.com keeps, now, now they keep all of your information online in their database. So like when I mm. started building mine a couple months ago when my, when my uh, father-in-law was here, all of that is now like locked into the Ancestry.com database, which I'm cool with because it's all, it's public knowledge, really, if, you, mm-hmm. if you're willing to do the research. The thing that gets me, though, is in, when you, once you provide 23andMe or Ancestry or any of these others, once you provide them your, your, uh, your DNA sample, it's in the terms of service that they can then do with whatever they want with that, that DNA sample. Not true. That is not true. Okay. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. You're saying which one? 23andMe or Ancestry? When I looked or it up, both. when I looked it up when he was here in June or whatever, they both said that. They both said basically we we can do whatever with your DNA that we want. No, Ancestry has has very uh, very much covered the uh, what do I want to say? The like a uh, user customer rights or or whatever you want to whatever you want to call it, they, they very clearly spell out that I own my DNA. They mm-hmm. do not own it. Uh, they can take the results of the test and do certain things with it, but I can revoke that privilege as well. So like if I decide, like once they, once they submit it to a study, the results of that study, like I can't like fuck their study up at that point. I can't remove my, <laughs> my contribution, but I can stop them from using it for, for future, you know, future studies, things like that. Um, and also like the, the results of like my ancestry, for example, mm-hmm. if I tell them, you know, take this off the internet, you, you can't use it for anything, then they, that it'll be gone. Like it won't, will not be available to anyone but me. Hmm. Now, granted, I mean, I'm, it's the internet and once things are on the internet, it's on the internet forever. Right. I understand that, but I mean, from, be, you know, be, forward because, facing. because I like arguing with you, I went and looked it up while you were talking. <laughs> And uh, apparently they, they posted a clarification on the 21st of May, which would be right after my father-in-law left, stating exactly what you just said. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> like I was the, afraid there for a second that you were going to No, say, that, that would, that would like, literally be like, like, I think four days after my father-in-law left when I was, was doing all this research about it. So there you go. There's, a, uh, there's an on-the-site correction and... Uh, uh, apology from the uh, from, from from Amos to Kent that uh, <laughs> you are correct, good sir. Uh, Mbeam in the chat says that twenty three and Me is definitely selling your data to third parties. Well, and that I think is probably a bigger concern, right? Twenty three and Me is looking at, um, I, I mean, basically, they're. I, I think of them as the service that is going to tell you about all the different ways that you're going to die, mm. and. That is something that I'm just not interested in knowing, frankly. I probably should because it's probably better, but I am also concerned about, well, But, but Richard, if, you're, you're in like your mid thirties. Like it might be too late to, de- to deny any of those as it is. It might already be too late, you know? Is, yeah, is there a point that's a fair in, point. In, is there a point in, uh, in knowing that's which way point. to avoid? I, well, I'm already over that 30. Yeah. Anyway, uh, 50. <laughs> so what I... <laughs> I mean, what I can, would worry about there is, let's say they come up with some, in, they get some investment or they have some partnership with a company that sells, say, health insurance, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. then are you suddenly at risk of being either denied or potentially gouged because you have a predilection towards something that hasn't yet been a previous, uh, you know, existing illness, but there was a, there was a gene there that suggested it would be that kind of creeps me out a little bit. That's, that's like saying we can't give you life insurance because you have a predisposition towards breast cancer because you're a female. I mean, well, that, that's like the, that's like the furthest case scenario on that, but would sure. You, that's, no, what, that's what I imagine. Any it, of these insurance companies. I mean, come on. Right, I, I mean, exactly. You guys have USAA, right? You guys have, mm-hmm. Um, USAA insurance, is that health insurance as well as no, other tri- types tri- of insurance? We have TRICARE, the, uh, the, okay, the, so gover- the military version. Yeah, well, it used, be, it. it used to be uh, government paid for, and now it's a uh, government subs- subsidized. Mm. So okay. Anyway. So I, I tend to trust things we, we like that like a little Edna bit more. Yeah. I would be worried about 
companies that are strictly independent consumer funded companies like say Pfizer or something like that, just, you know, doing yeah. the wrong thing with your data. I, I don't trust them. Not at all. And I, I can't talk about, you know, these DNA services without mentioning the fact that like Masato has copyrights on all these different, uh, uh, uh live uh, crops and shit like that. And, uh, this shit irritates hell. I mean, the whole GMO. And that is messed up. Shit. That yeah. is totally messed up. Especially when you can't control it because, well, you can't control the wind. So anyway, um, that, that, that's yeah, a, yeah, that's one of the special episodes, else. man. I, I would love to really get a deep dive, <laughs> dig into some of that, but I'm sure most people aren't as interested in it as I am. Dystopian future stuff. Because I, I thought the same thing about the DNA with, with health insurance. When I was reading the, all of the terms of service with the ancestry thing, I was like, oh my God, what if? And oh my God, is is our future not going to be that? Like, mm. holy shit. And yeah, oh yeah my we God. should do a whole what episode if, on fact, dystopian. I, I'm going to be distrib- discriminated against because I'm Irish. Yeah. Well, I mean, oh, yeah. me, well, me and well, Ken well, no, provided No, but I mean, I, I joke, like but I mean, breakdown of your like, DNA, like that, which. Th- yeah. Me and Ken provided a DNA sample when we joined the military, but that's yeah, yeah we're already screwed. Yeah, so here's the thing: they tell you, oh, this is uh, this is for in case you uh, in case you're lost in battle, we have DNA samples so we can positively identify your remains and maybe some other stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just quietly whisper, maybe some other stuff. Yeah, when when you join the military, you had to provide a DNA sample, and they tell you it's in case they have to recover your remains, they can positively identify you, so you're never in the in the tomb of the unknown soldier, which is a rotating tomb of whoever they, we can't identify at the time. So they, they tell you it's so that you avoid that circumstance. But if they're like the very last paragraph is like, is that, Oh, well, if we deem it necessary to use this information for any other purposes, blah, 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 blah. We can, you can't sue us. Bye bye. <laughs> it's like, okay. Well, more yeah, to hear. It's like at the bottom of page three in this tiny print. Yeah. So stupid. Um, <laughs> speaking okay. of, speaking of stupid, okay. I got something really stupid for you. 2017. This yeah. year. Whoa. This year. Whoa. It's been crazy. Yeah. R- Richard, yes. were you a fan of 2017? Um, I, I think in mentioning my excitement about being on this show, I referred to 2017 as a shit show. Ah, uh, yeah, that that would be the terminology used according to the record I have right over here. Yes, shit show would be the yeah would be would be the word. Yeah. Now there were good things, and there there were moments, mm. but wow, Look, yeah. When when the highlight of the year is that you didn't lose Prince or David Bowie. Oh my God! <laughs> that, How about it, that, that might be too soon, <laughs> even though it's been like a year and a half. For both of them, but still, it's How like about that? we we. I mean, we didn't lose anybody this year. That was like, oh my god. If we did, then it didn't it didn't happen to me? We but we lost a lot of we lost a lot of celebrities though. <laughs> yeah, well, we did. We did. I mean, yeah. we we lost some people, but I I think it wasn't as impactful as the icons that we lost last year. Mm. Yeah, because last year we did a whole breakdown. We we probably listed like twenty five people that we lost that yeah. mattered to us. Right. And I think last year Celebrity we recorded it like the, the day, maybe two days after Carrie Fisher had died when we recorded it last year. And it was just like, it was all wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we're not going to run down celebrity deaths. No, no. <laughs> this year, all right. So. Good, good, good. Um, we, we, uh, so Ken came up with some categories and, and I think we should, we could stick to those unless, uh, unless there's something, you know, out on the fringe that pops up. But, uh, we had some yeah. we had some pretty cool stuff this year actually. Yeah, so I, I figured you know because we could easily just just this podcast could just break down into just how awful shit was in 2017, and we definitely will talk about some of those things that that we didn't like seeing this year. Uh, but I I figured it was a good idea to like basically pre-select some items that 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 were positive this year. So like best moments, best things, and. Um, I say we this is, I know, really I totally great. know. This is to restrict my rants. I'm totally aware of this. <laughs> we, um, we, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't use those, those terms. Um, <laughs> no, I just say we alternate. So let's start out with something really cool. And then we'll, we'll let Richard have five minutes to just uh, go uh, off. Look, on look, look. That he hated. I'm just, I'm, I'm just going to say there's a reason we invited Richard on this particular episode last year and this year. 
<laughs> so we're we're not trying to restrict anything. We're just trying to make sure that uh, uh, we wanted to provide focused the voice and on contained, this show yes. that Amos and I could not provide ourselves. That is okay. very fucking true. <laughs> for for All right, legal so let's, reasons, let's start out really light. Listen, uh, Richard, what was your favorite movie of 2017? So my favorite movie of 2017 is actually a 2016 movie because I rarely get to the theaters. So when I get to watch a movie, it's usually in my own home. And my favorite movie without any question or competition was Arrival. I mm. I was blown away mm. by this movie. I saw what they were doing as... It was building Edward and I are watching it and like I was getting stuff that he wasn't and I was trying to kind of give him hints. I'm like, look, look, we saw that. And it still wasn't getting it until the reveal at the end, which I think they did a great job with. And I just absolutely loved that film. It was not what you expect it to be. It's not what you expect of any sort of, alien movie and the 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 feelings and emotions and uh just kind of scientific intrigue that that movie stoked i think is just unmatched in anything i've ever seen very nice uh amos did you um did you watch a movie about uh aliens uh, coming to earth so in my family, I, I tend not to be the one that watches a lot of movies with the family because they like to talk. And it's just like, like, I don't like people when they table talk when you're playing cards, like just enjoy the experience and don't try to augment it with your own shit or whatever else. But usually I'm the one that also has to answer the questions. Cause I'm, I'm usually the one following the story a little bit deeper and things like that <laughs> because they're all on their phones or they're not really paying as much attention as I am. Arrival was the movie that everyone thought they had it down. They thought they knew what was going on. They thought it was just a straightforward movie. And about 10 minutes into the movie, the first hint that the movie gives you of the big reveal at the end, I caught. And I'm, I'm not saying I'm a genius. Nice. I just happened to catch it. So from the very get-go, I knew what the story was. And I managed to sit there and just keep my, mouth, my damn mouth shut and watch everybody <laughs> else as they slowly came to realize it one by one by one. And very I... Good. It was a good movie. Then you add in that that personal atonement with it, man. It was it was, it was really good. And I again, I don't know why, how I caught it that first that first hint they dropped. It just it sparked, and I was like, oh, I'm in. I, I know what's going on. Um, yeah, Arrival was an amazing amazing movie. Yep. Yeah. What about a 2017 movie? Did you did you have a favorite out of those? Um. Yes. Get out. Oh my god. Uh, okay then. Fine. I'll. Yeah. I'll Jeez, like you don't have to be it's, so. Um, oh, the movie Get Out. Oh, <laughs> it, it it was not only a good sci-fi movie wrapped up in this this comedy drama, this, this dramedy rapper, but in the core of it is a sci-fi movie, and above all else, it was a political statement that didn't throw the political statement in your face. It let you come to the realization and let you the movie revealed itself to you at your own pace. And mm. it was so well done. It's a great movie. I've seen it like three times now. It's spectacular. I still it's interesting have not seen to me this. You called it a sci-fi. Um, I mean, I guess I, I never really thought of it as that. Maybe a fantasy thriller. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it is sci-fi. That's, that's really weird that I've never thought of it like that. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm in full agreement with you that that movie did make my list. That's the the second best movie of the year for me. Um, yeah, like an incredible. That movie start to finish is absolutely freaking incredible. Mm -hmm. The number one movie that I put on my list, though, was Wonder Woman. Hmm. That to me wow. was the surprise hit of of the year. Uh, like I wanted to watch, I, I go see every comic book movie. I, that's just what I do at Marvel, DC, uh, DC. I've got lower expectations for, I, I go in expecting to, eh, it's going to, it'll probably be a fun ride. It'll be okay. Like that's how I go into these movies. Uh, but wonder woman was delightful yeah. from start to finish. Yep. And I agree to me, the, the reaction that, that the movie got publicly was 
just as awesome to me as the movie itself. The, mm-hmm. you know, like the, uh, you know, female empowerment, uh, all of that, uh, hype, I guess that was surrounding the movie was inspiring, uh, everything about the movie. I just, I, I loved it. It's a beautiful film. Uh, if you guys don't agree with me, fight me. Uh, I, <laughs> I actually, I want to know, see, the, all the hype around this movie reminded me of a movie that came out in 2016, I'm pretty sure. But I, I always wondered why Wonder Woman got the positive end of the hype while, while Ghostbusters, the reboot, got the bad end of it. And uh, I love Ghostbusters. I thought the new Ghostbusters, I've seen it many times. I think it's hilarious. I laugh awesome. at that movie and laugh and laugh and laugh. It's not the yep. original. It calls to the original, but it's not the original. And right. it, it wasn't trying to be. But Yeah, it was the, not a remake. The, the social aspect of that movie was so shitty compared to Wonder Woman. And a lot of it is the same message. Maybe because it's a it's a it's an action movie versus a comedy. I don't know. But I always thought that was a little weird because both those movies are, are, are wonderful. Women are awesome movies. And they didn't come out too far apart from each other. Yeah, yeah I well, think... See, Go ahead. No, go ahead, Ken. <laughs> I was just going to say that. I was just going to say that. Uh, you know, I, I did like the new Ghostbusters. In fact, I just watched it for the first time, like I don't know, two, three months ago, and I enjoyed it. I thought mm. it was great. It was funny. Uh, the, the The women in that movie are absolutely freaking hilarious. All four of them are fantastic. But it wasn't like. I don't know if it's just that it wasn't the original Ghostbusters. It just wasn't. I don't know. It's not a movie that I'm going to watch multiple times. Wonder Woman, hmm. on the other hand, was so... I, I think the difference is the scale, like the epic scale of it. Wonder Woman yep. is a movie that I leave the theater... Like, if I was a little kid, I would have left the theater, like, like jumping around, wanting to fight, like, invisible bad guys. You know, where I would have left Ghostbusters with, like, like, yeah, you remember that one part? That was pretty funny, huh? Hmm. You know what I mean? It's just a different... It's a different feeling. Wonder Woman was inspiring hmm. where Ghostbusters was just like, yeah, that was a really funny movie. According to the twin 15 year olds I have in the house, both of them being female, ask them which one they want to watch and you'll get a different answer every single time. Hmm. Oh, yeah. interesting. Interesting. Yeah. I, I thought, um, I, I thought that Ghostbusters was fantastic. Mm-hmm. I, I think the negative pushback that it got was largely, prior to release. And I might suggest that largely coming from a group of vocal male assholes. I I really don't understand why anyone had an issue with remaking a cool premise with a completely different group of people. And Mm -hmm. Frankly, those people better not go see Captain Marvel because they're going to be very upset by it, (laughs) right? I mean, this is the time where we're starting to change things around and and change expectations. Was was Ghostbusters the first strike of that match? Mm, No, but it was probably the at the time the largest backlash. But you you see what I'm saying, though, because like from that point, in just the, the year since that new Ghostbusters came out is when all of this has been ramping up. I, I Just think, thinking in my mind, that's when it really became noticeable to me that there was all this anti-woman sentiment yeah. in Hollywood and shit. So maybe, at least for me, maybe that was the, the initial spark. Yeah, it was definitely loud. It was very loud. And, it, you know, it was and, loud. So in speaking of movies and, and the way that, that asshole men are, especially white men, um, President company excluded, of course. Um, angry, privileged. <laughs> As we're talking, three white, white guys dudes. here. Yeah, yeah, I know. But angry, privileged white dudes just <clears throat> thinking that you know shit should be the way that they want it to be. Um, you know, in in the context of movies, Star Wars is getting a lot of that right now. The Last Jedi yeah. mm. uh, pre-show, we were talking about how the three of us enjoyed this movie and it was it was fantastic. Well, these the same group of angry white kids that that had the issue with Ghostbusters, I'm sure it's the same, same group of people. They have a big problem with Star Wars because not only did you have a lot of female leads, you had a lot of minority leads Mm. and right. Female minority leads. Mm -hmm. Oh no. Save us from this atrocity. Right. 
Well, and, uh, and horrific stuff being said about the fact that there would be the possibility of a, a black stormtrooper. I mean, you know, yeah. God forbid. I, yeah. I mean, seriously, what the fuck? What year is this? The, I just, I, the only I argument, just do not understand this shit. The only argument I have that can that I can justify any way, shape, or form any of the the anti Finn sentiment is in Star Wars Legends, where all the stormtroopers are essentially clones of Boba Fett. Well, that's that, not Legends. That's that's canon. The original stormtroopers were right, but that, I mean that's because well, I'm, I'm speaking uh, specifically of the Thrawn trilogy, where that's like a huge discovery at, at that time. Right, but, oh, right. but that's right. all like that's completely wiped away, and now it's this. Captain Phasma is a chick and she's a badass chick and she leads the stormtroopers. Why can't there be a brown dude? Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's, and it's, and we know so. it's it's a couple generations later. So, you know, maybe they started the stormtroopers with a you know a set of clones, but perhaps that's not how they evolved. Perhaps at some point people enlisted. They well, wanted to be stormtroopers. There were a lot of questions of the feasibility of maintaining uh, clones in the Thrawn novels. Like there are questions like, you know, they're, they're not perfect and they, and this and that, but yeah. Yeah. So, well, anyway. and I think that that's, I think the, in the current canon, it's, it's very similar. Clones are expensive to purchase. You know, it's real cheap to go like kidnap children mm. and train them to be soldiers. Relatively speaking. Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's that, what that's the, the Empire real, that's the real story of star Wars is that slavery is cheap. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's yeah, exactly. So like a lot, most of the stormtroopers. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you got some volunteers, but like Finn, for example, was taken as a child. Mm. Now, granted, he's a first order stormtrooper, not an imperial stormtrooper. Yeah. Uh, but I, you know, I think it's a little bit of both. There's like Phasma was probably yeah, she probably about enlisted. That. So, you know, um, so, so I just of Phasma, want to kind of remind you guys that we are one topic into eight. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, All right. So movies. Movies are cool. We love movies. Yeah. <laughs> good summary, Ken. Good summary. Good summary. Good answer. Good answer. Um, <laughs> All right. All right. So let's let's change gears a little bit. Bring you down. To I read. A, I read a lot of news, and I really, really love reading science news. I know you guys are into tech, but I'm wondering how much into science news you guys are. Do you like reading about? Uh, new technological uh, discoveries, new um, uh, scientific, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like epiphanies, th- brand new things that we've never seen before in nature. Do you, are you guys, does that interest you guys at all? Um, yeah, it, it, it definitely it does me. me. Yeah. It, it's, <laughs> I think you nailed it. Cause me, me, you and uh, me and you can't, um, I've always been more the techie guy. You've always been more the science guy. That's kind of where our lines kind of go. Um, yeah, yeah, but you both put in something in here, and I agree with both of them, and I find them to be two different things. One is more the tech side, and one is more the the right. science side. But both of them, in my mind, are are just as prevalent because I think they're both going to kill us. Yeah. So, well, <laughs> let me hit mine real quick because I actually spoke about this two weeks ago. So I'm just going to hit it real quick. I'm still absolutely fascinated by a more more the the interstellar asteroid that visited our solar system Mm -hmm. that scientists for a while were thinking oh my god this is showing signs that it might not be a natural object it's possible that it's aliens well they pretty much come to the conclusion that eh, it's probably not aliens it's probably natural you were referring of course to the uh the the space dick the space dick yes right. um, that's the, that's what, that's what the, uh, I'm, I'm sorry the can you name. can you say that slower what 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 exactly are you saying there uh uh space is a dick i mean space dick the space <laughs> dick yeah yeah the space dick <laughs> uh yeah but that, that still fascinates the hell out of me that we were actually considering this object as being possible alien life right. uh still blows my mind uh richard what was the article that caught your attention it's more of a theme really yeah and this is a theme for sure and and that's that really over the past year there's been a lot of debate about the potential threat of ai and you know we have scientists coming out saying that 
you know, there's great opportunity in the things that we're going to be able to do with AI and we'll be able to achieve things otherwise not possible. And then you have folks like Elon Musk and and not just him, but many other renowned, really smart people who have actually accomplished things like tangible things with their knowledge. And they're saying, yeah, you know, we should be concerned Mm. because we, we might not be able to control this. This could get away from us faster than we think it could. And I tend to fall on the latter side of that debate. Yeah. So the thing that caught my attention was when the, when they said that AI was speaking a language with On other the AI internet, that the it algorithms made up are- and we didn't know what it was saying to each other. Right. Right. That and was and kind did of a- you see how fast that Facebook backtracked on that? <laughs> yeah. They're like, oh, no, no, we knew it was going to do that. It's fine. Algorithms are completely. um, Yeah, don't worry about that. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Um, By the way, we killed that AI like that AI doesn't exist anymore. (laughs) It's like, oh, my God. Um, For the second time tonight, I'm going to refer you to CGP Gray this time in his natural habitat on YouTube. He just did a video called How Machines Learn. And there's another video. It's two minutes long. It's, It's like a supplementary, you know, video to it. Yeah. If if AI doesn't scare you watch these videos because it's not a threatened video. It's just, it's literally, this is how it works. We're not, no one knows how AI is working right now. We design things that provide tests. The AI divide, divide, uh, d- d- designs future machines, future algorithms to solve those tests. And they're kind of just yeah. going on their own. And well, which is, it's which really is kind fascinating. Of the point. Well, it's kind of the point of AI, right? Like that's, that's the whole reason we're fucking with AI is to, make a thinking machine so that it can do the thinking for us, not just solve the equations that we told it to solve. Right. Yeah. Actually figure out what the equations are. It's, it's completely fascinating. I think, I think a, uh, an AI controlled space dick is going to smash into earth and kill us all. That's what I think is going to (laughs) happen. Oh man. You know, that's, uh, uh, it's probably not incorrect. <laughs> um, like prove it. You can't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, man. okay. So, uh, so let's get into some of the things of, uh, now that we're talking more sciencey stuff, what is your favorite gadget of the year? Man, for me, it's gotta be the iPhone 10. Uh, maybe it's just personal bias because, Seriously? because I have one. Uh, but no, I was just, I'm, I'm still fascinated by the whole face ID thing and the whole, you know, the face mapping and the 3d uh, depth, uh, all, all of that stuff is just, you just described it, the iPhone the way my mom would describe the iPhone. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, it's, um, I'm, I'm doing that for, uh, for the sake of the audience. Uh, the, no, I'm, I, I'm still just fascinated that, that we have supercomputers that we put in our pockets and mm. it, it blows me away. And this is just like the newest version of the coolest tech that there is. Uh, that's, that's why, you know, and I'm sure Richard has a, a way better answer for this than I do because he's got like a billion gadgets in his house. Um, but the, the main gadget that I interface with on a daily basis is my phone and I'm in love with the iPhone 10. So that's that's the boring answer, and that's my answer. So for 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 Richard, I'm almost more interested in how he selected, how he narrowed down his field of gadgetry for the year into this object more than the object itself. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's actually hard to call it an object, right? This is more of a technology, right. and for me, this is something that is that has changed the way that I watch television and movies in my home to the extent that I modified my home and rearranged furniture to accommodate the technology. So I'm, what I'm talking about is Dolby Atmos. So if we're talking about the best gadget, I guess it would be Dolby Atmos receivers. And what Dolby Atmos is it, you know, we are all used to surround sound now. Everything has surround sound or simulated surround sound. And the way that works is that studios spend an enormous amount of time figuring out what channel 
what speaker channel, either of the five or seven and the subwoofer, should be making this particular noise that's happening in a movie right now, and how much of it should it make? Should it make 50% of it and the other 50% is in another speaker? Should it make 90% of it so it really sounds like it's coming from there? There's just there's a lot a of very, overhead. There's a lot of overhead and a significant mm. amount of production that goes into creating surround sound. Dolby Atmos is a technology that allows production companies to map sound based on where they really heard it. And in real live situations, that is ideal. Like if you think about sports and stuff like that, where the sound came from, and it, if you can allow the technology in your recording devices to pinpoint that, then you know, that takes a lot of the guesswork out of where it needs to be mapped in terms of what speakers it needs to come out of. But what what's really amazing is that in producing movies where you're creating sound effects and such, you can basically say, oh, well, this is basically behind you at an elevation of 39 degrees, 14 feet away from you in the 360 degree sphere that surrounds you at 270 degrees. It Jeez. basically creates a 3D space around a listener and maps the audio that way. And the difference in how things sound is just stunning. So you were talking about Wonder Woman earlier. Wonder Woman is kind of like a reference disc for the use of Dolby mm. Atmos. They have such mm. an incredible use of the sound field to make you feel like you are enveloped by what's going on around you. And, and you need a special receiver to do this. You have to have a, a Dolby Atmos enabled receiver. You have to have a Dolby Atmos enabled disc player to be able to uh, play this back. But when it works, it is phenomenal. And mm. I've adjusted where my furniture is in my house related to the TV. I have installed speakers in the ceiling because that's one of the things that's necessary, necessary to make this work. And I am friggin' loving it. Now you, I'm sure you're old enough to remember um, when Jurassic park hit theaters and it was the first time that was it Dolby digital oh, yeah. or DTS or whatever T THX. I think it was THX or well, I, Which, yeah, whichever I think it was one THX it was before that. Whichever one it was, it was the first movie that came out with that. And you had to go to special theaters that were, that were equipped for it. And of course, that, that was like the only way to experience Jurassic Park the first time was in one of those theaters. Is yep. this that same sort of bump? Oh, I absolutely think it is. And again, I'm, you know, we were talking earlier about how I edit breaths out of my podcasts, right? <laughs> like I'm an audio freak. <laughs> and so... I, I really care about the audio quality of what I'm listening to. I can't stand when I watch something and it switches to just like stereo. Like half the shit on Hulu is still in stereo. Are you freaking kidding me? Mm. That is just ridiculous. So it, I love that we're seeing the technology pushed out to the household now that you can get the same technology that they're using in theaters. Dolby Atmos is a theater technology that they have adopted to the household. And there are numerous ways that you can implement it. The real key is you have to have some sort of above sound and that's either done by speakers in the ceiling or speakers that bounce sound off of the ceiling. Hmm. Wow. I'm going to, I'm going to stick with the audio aspect of it for my gadget of the year. And that is just my, my, and it's not a specific gadget. It's the overall setup that I'm using for podcasting now between the mixer and so many, so many more capabilities and cleaner sound just in general, just it's a better fucking mixer than my previous one. Um, the mic, the, the, the way that I have it all set up and, and integrated, I know it's a pain in the ass. I know no, none of you understand it and it's way overcomplicated, but for me, this is like my current setup is, is practically a dream come true. It's amazing. If someone, if, if, if my wife comes walking in here right now, it would take me less than 30 seconds to have her mic'd up and ready to go listening, you know, monitoring the sound and having a microphone dedicated to her channel. Like it's, I, I, I'm just, man, it's been, a, it's been a hell of a, a hell of a year as far as these gadgets go right here. That's awesome. 
And it was all made yeah. possible by our Patreons. By our patrons. Oh, yeah. Y- you might want to do a plug that's there. A, this is a great time that's for a, you yeah, to do that's a plug a really and for me point. to get a beer. Uh, that That is something that is made possible by our patrons over at <laughs> patreon.com slash ritual misery. If you want to make Amos's more of Amos's dreams come true uh, or help me buy that new microphone that I've been looking at, uh, head over to patreon.com slash ritual misery. Uh, show us that you give a fuck, give us a buck, and uh, take advantage of all of the extra bits that we occasionally drop into the patron only feed. Uh, really cool stuff in there. Really cool stuff coming in I, 2018 as well. I think. I think the next thing we're next big thing we're saving for is Dragon Con, right? To finish the. Oh yeah, time for it. I think that's the, that, the, well. That, the, that's on our trifecta. That's, yeah, that's on our that's on our soft plate. Yeah, and that's you know we've got time too. We could set a goal. We can make that a goal. Yeah, yeah. We, this is yeah. something we need to work on anyway. Um, but yeah, uh, if you give a fuck, give a buck, and it's it's just awesome that we have people willing to help us out because we do spit some of that money back out to other podcasts that we enjoy and things like that as well. So it's uh, it's not money wasted. It's not uh, it's not buying cheeseburgers. It's actually going <laughs> to making this show and let's talk about thrones and things like that better. That's that's yep. what, what the money's going to. So, Definitely. um, hey, uh, we we kind of glossed over a little bit, but TV shows have been pretty crazy this year. Um, some real good stuff come out. M- me and the wife just watched Godless on uh, Netflix this last weekend. Seven episodes. It's it's a three hour movie cut into seven hours. So don't watch it. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I'm glad I did, but I wouldn't recommend anyone else watch it. You know, because it's it's a western. I'm not really into westerns, but it's it's really nicely done. But again, this is it's a three hour story broken out into seven hours. Um, but we've all had some some shows this year that really struck us. And I'll start with mine real quick because it's easy. Stranger Things, not season two, the original Stranger Things. I didn't watch until this year, this calendar year, because uh, um, it was right. late, late to the game. That show really showed me how a period piece can be done on television. Just amazing. Yeah. And season two just adds to it. But season one is really where it, it hit me like, sure. wow, this is awesome. Yeah, absolutely. No, I, I agree with you. That that made my list as well. I I love that show. Uh, people that don't understand it or just don't like it. I just I don't understand them. <laughs> that show is just so good. It's got something for everyone, I think. And it's just it's great. It's, it's fantastic. What about you, Richard? Yeah, so I agree on Stranger Things. I've been watching that, and uh, it's a great show. But my show pick went to something that basically just destroys me emotionally every week. Mm. And that is the amazing storytelling on This Is Us. This is, I think, the second or third season. I can never remember which because I'm already so invested in the characters that they've developed, but God damn, this is a good show. The writing is brilliant. The production is seamless. The storytelling is across multiple timelines and you often don't even realize that's that, that that is happening. And they continue to do that week after week after week in surprising and stunning and emotionally impactful ways. I love this show and I will shamelessly admit that I am usually a bag of tears at the end of the episode. I, I've heard yeah, it's I, really good. I just, I, my, my, because I'm a, I'm a very strict cord cutter. I certain shows yeah. like this, I just can't catch until later. Yeah. And that's, that's what I was going to say too. Cause this, this is like a cable only, right? It's not like on Hulu or anything. It's uh no, 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 like, no. You like, can totally watch this on Hulu. This is an ABC show hmm. and, or NBC, I forget which, but you can catch this on Hulu. So mm. I think okay. they're only showing the last five though. Right. right. So oh, you're not see, that's, be able that's to what binge. Yeah. That's what kills it me on Hulu does this with a lot of their series is they'll only have the last several episodes. Yeah. And if I happen to miss episode one and the first episode they have is episode two, well, I'm out. Like yeah. I, I, yep. And, and you can't catch up on this. I mean, I, no, sorry. You can't jump into this. You have to start, at yep. the beginning. It's, it's a serial you progressive to, show, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. But it is so fucking good. It's, it's amazing. It's probably, I think the best writing that's been on television since Battlestar Galactica. Mm. 
Wow. And yeah, uh, I'll have to check it out because I've heard nothing but amazing stuff about sp- it. Speaking of, of things that are, are surprisingly good, I've heard nothing but good things about the Orville. I'm not going to watch it probably ever, but <laughs> it's, it's one of those things that I can definitely say is, is like, wow, this is uh, the people that I trust with their opinions on TV like this show. Yeah, no, I'm, I think I'm going to quote either Tom Merritt or Brian Brushwood here, but this is this was my thought exactly. I went in expecting a comedy with some sci-fi elements and walked out with a sci-fi show with a little bit of comedy in it. Mm. Yeah, uh, it's it's Star Trek: The Next Generation with with a few more jokes. I mean, this is Seth MacFarlane's like pet project, right? Like this is his, his yeah. magnum opus. Yeah, like he he's he's loved star Trek forever. And Mm. he's talked before about wanting to do a star Trek project. And this is his star Trek project without it actually being star Trek. Mm. It's, it's incredible. It's, it's so, 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 so good. It's part next generation. It's part galaxy quest. I kind of wish that they would tone down the like absurd elementary ridiculousness in some scenes And most of those come from the pilot when when he and the captain get together, they kind of act just ridiculous together and and lose all sense of environment. And I I think that takes me out of the show a little bit every once in a while. But otherwise, I agree with you. I love the show. Great cast. Lots of Mm. fun. Serious messages. I mean, this is the the kind of themes that they had in the original and next generation star trek they mm-hmm. deal with serious social issues yeah for sure yeah definitely yeah i i i cannot recommend this enough if you if you like star trek that you have to see this um so jackie here in the chat rooms mentions uh, mr robot a show that i'm trying to trying to binge with my son uh, now the christmas season's here and very we, good yeah um I, I i haven't watched it at all kind of stayed spoiler free on it other than that there's the rubber ducky and you know, the USB rubber ducky, things like that, you know, from, you know, other places, but uh, Mr. Robot better call Saul. It, um, I've heard nothing but great things about that show. Yep. Um, also great. The vandals I haven't seen the crown. Every time I log into Netflix, it tells me I should, I'm, I've got a 98% match with the crown. Netflix is yelling at me to watch the crown. I just haven't, haven't done it yet. Really good. <sighs> yeah. Really good. And uh, not surprisingly, she does mention Game of Thrones uh, this season, this last season. Of course, I want to keep it spoiler free for for Richard, but um, it was everything we expected and wanted, and it delivered, and and, and on a magnitudinal scale, like it really and and promises. Yeah. Oh man, it's, it promises it's so the next season to be as good or be- like, probably like better. If, if they fuck up season eight of the Game of Thrones, it'll be the worst flop in history. Of television. Yeah, I think that says a lot, right? Because people were really anxious, meaning as in anxiety uh, about this season because of the fact that it wasn't written. It was literally just in time writing for the series. And everyone was concerned about how that would play out. And the fact that people love it as much as they do, I think says a lot. And maybe, you know, Give the guy a break. He knows what he's doing. Yeah. Um, when I can watch a show and my sister-in-law is literally yelling at the top of her lungs and I don't mind because I'm feeling the same way. <laughs> and that was like three or four of the episodes this year. Like it talking about a show that is, that is peaking late. Holy shit. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. All right. So we got a, we got a few other things we can, we can knock out real quick. Uh, let's go dark. Come on. Let's go dark. Let's go dark. The most, what the fuck moment of the year, Kent, <sighs> what, what was your most, what the fuck moment of the year? Oh God. Right. So, well, we kind of touched on this earlier when we were talking about the movies and how just an angry white guys, uh, not liking people that are not white and not like them. Uh, Okay, so I, I've known I've known racists my entire life. I've I've known that there's racists. I've known that there's you know society, uh, t- well at least American society tends to skew racist. I, I understand all of that. I've understood that for a long time, but I did not understand until this year, until this summer. I did not understand just how pervasive this racism is. People that I like I never would have thought would would have a racist bone in them 
Uh, no, I, I mean, I understand. Like, all of us are probably a little bit racist. A little bit. You uh, know? We'll go with a little bit and, prejudiced. Well, sure, sure. And, Just in general? Well, we're definitely pre- Like, everyone is prejudiced. I, I, I'm sorry. Everyone is prejudiced to a point. I agree. But, but my point was that, that we probably got a little bit of racism in us in the sense that we, like, unconsciously will have expectations from people based on what they look like to a point. Well, and that's the difference between um, a stereotype and the prejudice. A stereotype is, a, is an activity sure. that you, you start, you start stereotyping people because of previous experiences. Prejudice sure, just sure. comes with no previous experience. It's just a, a blank bullshit statement. Sure. And and this is another one of those topics that we could, we could have an entire episode yeah. on. And we have, uh, but, but my, <laughs> yeah, I know. <clears throat> um, no, but it just, so the, uh, People that I I never thought would would express certain things, uh, it it was just it was all around me. Mm-hmm. Um, things like, so for for example, this is this is just the first example that came to my head. Uh, I was talking to someone, a, a coworker, about the in a, oh I was I was just mentioning like hey did you watch did you watch uh, Monday Night Football la- last week or last night or something like that, and he was like no I don't watch the NFL. Like, oh, okay. oh, that's right. You're a college guy. He's like, well, yeah, I, I prefer college sports, but also like, fuck the NFL. Oh, okay. You know, all right. That's fine. You know, um, he's like, no, like he wanted to talk about it. He was like, no, fuck the NFL. They should fucking fire all these fucking shithead players for kneeling and blah, 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 blah. I was like, why? It's not, it's not against the rules. It is. And yeah. he was like, you know, and he started on this rant about the, um, you know, about the kneeling or whatever. And I was like, hold on, stop, 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 stop. Before you continue, I'll let you continue. But before we continue, do you know what the protest is about? He was like, well, I mean, I've heard some things. I was like, no, do you know what the protest is, what it's about? And he couldn't tell me. So when I started to explain it to him, like the whole, you know, Black Lives Matter, um, police brutality, um, um, systemic racism and all that sort of stuff, he was just like dumbfounded and he was like, well, okay, sure. Some people can think that, but, um, I think they're just a bunch of, uh, you know, what, whatever. Anyway, started down this whole path and I'm just like, who the fuck even are you? Like, what are you saying right now? Just the dismissal of, of, uh, just the, I guess, racial issues, like the, uh, the concerns that black people in America have um, about being black in America, a lot of white people just fucking dismiss it. Like, nope, they're just not trying. Or nope, they're just being fucking whatever. Oh, they just want a fucking handout. Oh, they just want... What the fuck? That to me is... That blew my mind how pervasive that... Just willful, negligent, willful ignorance. Ah, I don't know. Somebody well, that's, stop me. That's what it is, right? I mean, it, it is ignorance. And I, I think that it is in some ways systemic and something that you kind of inherit is the wrong word, but, you know, you uh, adopt from how you grew up. It's the, it's how you were nurtured, right? This is nature versus nurture. And you grow up in an environment where people have opinions and you are exposed to their opinions. And so maybe those become your opinions without you understanding why those opinions existed or, uh, you know, whether they're still relevant or not. And then that kind of colors everything that you see in negative and unfair ways because you don't expose yourself to the world as it exists, as you see it, you're seeing it through that lens and it's crazy. And uh, you know, it comes from families. It comes from communities. It comes from lack of education. There's so many causes for this happening, but it is, you know, you, you, you mentioned, You mentioned an example, and the first thing that I was thinking is that, well, I bet none of them have been pulled over for driving while black. You know, I mean, you know, there's just, there are these systemic issues that we have 
that anyone who is not in that position just cannot understand. And we all probably dealt with this with our respective families. I mean, mm. I loved my family. I loved my parents, but yeah. you know, I loved my grandfather, but I realized that he was a bigot pretty early on. And you know, my mom could do totally deal with the fact that I was gay, but couldn't deal with the fact that I was dating a black man. I mean, that's just totally fucked up. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, I mean, come oh on. Oh my God. Yeah. That, yeah. That was one of those things that I always, I always heard my grandma use, use terminology that I knew was not good because we lived in Southern California for the most of the time. So it was like, you know, the, the spicks, the wetbacks, she didn't use that language, but she used um, the way she spoke without using the language that, it, that we know is, is not polite, um, carried the meaning more than the words ever would have anyway. But my grandpa, on the other hand, my grandpa was one of the most even keeled people ever. <laughs> and you know, he, he didn't care. He cared, he couldn't care what your last name was, how much money you had, how big your wallet was, where you grew up. Could you get the fucking job done? Then we're, we're good. We're yeah. good. Yeah. And, yeah. and my grandpa was just that way. And it was, it was always weird to see them because my, my, my grandpa was a good man and he, his wife ruled his world, you know? Um, but he would shut up and not say anything when she was going on her little, Chitty chat chat moments. Um, but but <laughs> no, talking to grandpa any other time is like, are you getting, are you getting the work done? Then then show up tomorrow and get some more work done. And we'll, we, we will just continue to have that. And uh, it's one of those things. And this is, this is also the year 2017 is the year where I got pulled into MEO. Well, I didn't get pulled into, I went there voluntarily before getting pulled into because I made um, a joke. Tell people what that is. Uh, MEO is military equal opportunity. Basically, if someone thinks you're racist or sexist or you know uh, ageist, or whatever, they they can file a complaint and blah 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 blah. Um, because I made a joke about Black Lives Matter, and it wasn't even about Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter was was part of the story, but nowhere near the punchline. And the part that got me, okay, well, you've, that's not something to joke about. I I'm in the uh, the George Carlin school of laughter, where I think anything can be funny. Yeah, like t tell a joke at a funeral kind of deal. Well, any, like anybody, his example is rape can be funny. Imagine Porky Pig raping Donald Duck. <laughs> you know, it's it's all about the context. Okay. Sure, sure, sure. Well, once the person who said I was being racist found out that I was married to a black woman that I grew up in a mostly black and, and Hispanic neighborhood, oh, now it was okay for me to make the jokes. And I was like. Hey, I was like, okay, first of all, the joke, first, the joke had nothing to do with this particular thing. And second of all, that wouldn't make it okay if it wasn't otherwise okay. Right. Yeah. That's like, right. it's, like you uh, get a pass now for some reason. Right. It, it, oh, because, oh wait, I have this one black friend. Oh my so God. like, it's okay. I can say that. Yeah. It, all my lawyers are Jewish. Oh, oh wait, that was a different <laughs> issue. Yeah, that was getting political now. Oh, sorry. Um, sorry. Uh, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> how messed up was that? Jeez. I mean, seriously, this is oh, the same way to go, issue, Alabama. right? Way no. to go. This is the same shit. Yeah, it, it really is. It, it's, it's sad. God. <clears throat> and Ken, oh my God. Ken, you grew okay, up in a yeah, town. So besides racism, <laughs> do we have anything else besides racism? Well, I actually, I want to follow that because I think mine is very closely related to that. And I have something different down here. Somehow I had blocked this out of my mind because it was so horrific and unbelievable. Mm. My biggest what the fuck moment this year is Charlottesville and oh, right. yeah. people's reaction to it. Like, how did this happen? How did we let this happen? If you haven't seen it, and I'm speaking to anyone listening to this, if you have not seen it, I want you to go to Vice News. And I want you to find the expose they did where they had someone embedded with the white supremacists that were there to speak their mind. And I don't quite know how she had the access that she did and frankly, how she felt safe in the position that she was in because I watching that felt threatened mm. and I was astounded by how, 
in revealing and how disturbing their reporting was on just like what's in these people's heads. Um, and I, I can't understand it. I can't understand it at all. And, and we, you know, most people know of Charlottesville by what they saw in the news. And that is popularized by the, the angry uh, white collared white guys screaming and, and then crying on YouTube a couple days later because, Oh no, people don't like them now because they're a bunch of assholes. And, the circling around the statues and the the unbelievable situation where someone lost their life while you know some asshole was basically trying to uh he, you know, he, just push he, through the crowd he was trying to he was and, trying to hurt a lot of people end up hurting some and killing one and yeah. it yeah. just yeah un unbelievable and, and and being, so I, and being I, in the chat room has the uh, has the link to that article. I'll go ahead and put make sure that is in the show notes as well. Yeah, yeah thank you. I, amazing reporting on this and stunning, shocking, horrible, horrible uh, kind of revelation of what a, a subset of people in this country are thinking. Mm. And it's it's sad and horrible and unfortunate that people think this way, but I have zero tolerance for it. And yeah. I think we as a society need to have zero tolerance for it. And the fact, the fact that we are dealing with fucking Nazis in 2017, after yeah. everything that happened in the past is just inexcusable. Yeah. I see. I, I don't have any problem with, with a person being a white supremacist. I don't have I don't have a problem with them being a Nazi or a neo Nazi. I don't have a problem with with them being. Um, you, you can have whatever political, societal, uh, 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 classical, classist views that you want to have. I you I'm I'm fully supportive of you having whatever views you want. Until the very the the minuscule part of a second that it affects anyone other than your own fucking self. And yeah, especially well, I mean, when, you can't, when, yeah, when we mean, start allowing people. people can... Yeah. When, when you, when you, if you want to put up a blog and have all kinds of hate speech, more power to you. I'll ban you and not buy your product. You know, like it, it just blows me away that we allowed such a large congregation of people and allowed well, their here... voices to be so loud. Well, here, but here's, here's the thing. Like, just like you say it's okay for them to have a blog, it's I would say that it's equally okay for them to meet together in public. Like when you say it's crazy that we allowed that, like how would we not allow it? Do you mean like like morally as a society, yes. like letting our sons yes. become that? Yes. Or I, 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 I'm, you know me, I'm a big proponent of the First Amendment. You can say whatever you want and you have the right to say in, in whatever platform you want what you want to say. But mm -hmm. as a society, how did we not just completely crush that whole philosophy of let's all gather together as a bunch of white supremacists or a bunch of, of, of whatever the hell they wanted to call themselves and just not completely crush that out, out, of, out of the news immediately and make zero headway anywhere with it? it just, yeah, well, it, I, just, I mean, it had, it had to be in the headlines because it was so... Uh, it's so just out there. What the fuck? Like, there's no yeah. way it could have not been on the news. Because if it was not in the news, it would have been a buried story. You know? Right, right. I think it's easy to say. Well, don't give it attention. You know, don't give it. Don't give them the attention that they want. But the reality is that this is a a a real and legitimate threat mm. to many people, and I, I feel as if. You know, they, there are many ways that the media blew this out of proportion. And I would even go so far as to argue that the media blew Trump's statements about this out of proportion to frame him, his take on what happened in a certain way. But I don't think that I, I don't know how we address this. I agree. People need to have their own beliefs and say what they want to say. But at the same time, if their intent is to threaten or harm other people, 
no, then no, period, no. That's where it stops. Mm. Yep, yep, yep. Um, as for your thing, Kent, I just want to say that, yes, it is actually against the NFL rules for a player to kneel. Um, it's a violation of the NFL rules for them to kneel during the national anthem. And it is fuck not. the NFL. It, it, it is. is not. The rule, the rule says players should stand. It does not say players will stand. Mm. Anyway, go ahead. Um, and as far as Colin Kaepernick, he made a statement. I think he should have taken it to another platform, but the platform was chosen regardless. And I think the platform is a very effective one, at least in building a mindset. I just think the message got lost. And I think that's very unfortunate that the message got lost. Oh yeah. I'm not convinced of that. I'm, I'm not convinced of that. Mm. I think it, it, it raised awareness in, in some ways negatively, but I, I think that, I mean, you know, well, he's, by, by, he's a rebel. By saying that the message got lost is, is because they started focusing on the players that were kneeling instead of why the players were kneeling. Yeah. You know, case in point, my coworker right. uh, that, that didn't understand what it was about, he had no idea that it had anything whatsoever to do with police brutality, Black Lives Matter, anything like that. He had no fucking clue. It's because of the... I don't even want to say necessarily the like right wing media, but I'm going to say it anyway. Fuck no, it. it's totally right-wing Fox News. Yeah, it is totally Fox News. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah they, they, basically, they have turned it into a these uh, America hating fucking idiot assholes, uh, you know, millionaires that get paid to fucking play a game. They want to disrespect their country. That's what they changed it to. That yeah. They changed the narrative of the story. And that's the only version of the story that my coworker had heard. Yeah. I think that's so, probably the theme of 2017. They changed the narrative of the story. Um, yeah. My, my what the fuck moment this year was Louis CK. And it wasn't that it wasn't the per- per- pervasiveness of these sexual allegations and everything else, uh, harassment allegations in Hollywood and all that. It was for me. And I'm not trying to justify his actions in any way. It was the way he presented his message of what happened and how mm-hmm. I could identify with it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I mean, we, we, like, talk, we I, talked about this with Mike TV a couple of weeks ago, but yeah. Go ahead, Richard. I was not at all surprised to hear that he might have done the things that he's done. Mm. And I kind of credited him for uh, like stepping up and, and fessing up to it. But at the same time, this, like, this is such a pervasive problem. Mm. It, like, I, I like with, with Louis CK, I think like, really, you know him, you know, his comedy, you know, the things that he jokes about. And I don't know the guy, but did this surprise me? No, this didn't surprise me at all. Yeah. Again, I wasn't surprised that he, sh- he wanted to wink off in front of chicks. I mean, I, that's, I don't even find that abnormal. Like I would, if, if that's what your thing was, Kent, I'd be like, well, well that's your fucking thing. I don't care. Um, it was how he posed his apology and how I could identify specifically with his. I didn't identify with, with Spacey's. I didn't identify with any of these other big names or whatever, all the denial shit no. like that. It was the fact that he, in, in his apology, he stated, I was not aware at the time that that was considered a position of power and that I was yeah. using my positional authority on this person to me in my mind until that moment in my mind, it was always, Oh yeah. You're using your position of power. You fucking know that. And that was the first time I was like, well, I need to go back and recheck my previous girlfriends and previous sexual encounters and things like that. Was I ever guilty of that? And I mean, I've, I've had some introspection time. I don't think I ever was, but I don't think I ever was. And I think right. I mentioned yeah, that yeah. on a previous yeah. episode. And I think that's a really valid point, right? Is that, it all of this, I think, makes people wonder what have they done over time. I mean, you know, guys, we I'm all make mistakes. Man. I've probably offended some women at some point in my life with some like, like discolored or or inappropriate remarks, just trying to be funny. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But we're still inappropriate, yet not coming from any place of threat, right? right. And and I think that 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 makes you think what, you know, how do we treat people and how do, how do we interact with each other 
and you know how has how have we let this go on as long as we have like we can see george h bush and say oh he's an old guy he's patting a woman on the bottom he doesn't know any better okay maybe we can say that that is understandable not okay but understandable why it happens but how is this still a problem that's just messed up yeah but i mean yeah it, the three of us as as men are part of the problem and it's now our duty in, in the small circles we have to be part of the solution as well and that was my what the fuck moment this year that was my whoa wow nice yeah so yeah i, th- I think 2017 <laughs> among all of the things that 2017 has been i think it's got kind of been a year of introspection like like open your eyes this is you america mm. Like a, like a realization a, here, a pulling back of the white sheet. Yeah, uh, huh. uh, like that I don't know if the pun was intended, but double entendre there. Um, yeah. Okay. okay so, go high. Go yeah, high. Let's, let's go. go high. Let's go some some better things. Um, what was your personal favorite moment of the year, Richard? So I'm a little bit embarrassed because all of you are going to talk about stuff that has been about other people. It's it's been about you and other people in your lives. Mine? Yeah, it's totally about me. So <laughs> Selfish Richard. <laughs> yep, absolutely. So my my personal moment this year, and like I was really excited about this. At the beginning of this year, I was a panelist at CES talking about smart lighting. And anybody who listens to my show, anybody that's probably heard me on this show, knows that I am a lighting geek. Yes, there is such a thing as a lighting geek. I am totally <laughs> one into the of technology. On this earth and he's on our show. No, there, right are, there, are, there are many people. There are many people. There's at least totally three. They lighting. have a club. Yeah, <laughs> we do. You have to know the handshake. And <laughs> I'm, I, you know, is, is, is I, I was... Is this the handshake? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And for those of you not watching, he is pointing to his iPhone. So I am uh, one... <laughs> I, I I was one of four or yeah, four people on a panel at the start of the year talking about smart lighting and how it's evolving and you know, what the problems are, what some of the opportunities are. And I was so honored to be a part of that. I have been on a, a, you know, a, a number of different panels about stuff, but this is something that is like at the core of things that I love. Mm. And so this was probably my biggest personal slash professional highlight of the year. I awesome. I'm actually going to go along with that a little bit because mine is about me, not necessarily about the other individual um, at Nerdtacular this year. Now everybody, everybody has an, has some sort of idol or someone they look up to a mentor. Um, if you, if you're passionate about something and someone else has done it before you have an, an, an affection towards that, towards that person whether it's Neil deGrasse Tyson and Carl Sagan or, you know, whatever, right. In the podcasting realm, my idol, the person that I would most like to be like is Tom Merritt. And at Nerdtacular this year, we didn't have name tags or anything else. When I walked up to him the first time, went to shake his hand, say hello. And he said, Oh, Hey Anthony, how are you? Mm -hmm. And he knew me by name on site without any prior indication. That was a moment that was like, Dude, you that, don't that give like, yourself that, enough credit. That was like that was like Neil. That, that was like a, a drummer meeting Neil Pert. And Neil Pert being like, "Hey, Jim," you know. Dude, um, it, was, it was just amazing. He knows who you are. Of course, he knows who you are. You don't give yourself enough credit. I, well, regardless, it, that that was a moment for me. That was, that was like there was there's a bit of validation in that that probably was disproportionate, but it was there. Dude, I had I had a very similar moment at Nerdtacular with the same guy, but I had. Uh, I, I guess I misunderstood at first how he had the information that he had. Cause Tom's birthday was like the week prior to Nerdtacular. And when I first saw him, I was like, hey, Tom. He's like, oh, hey, man, how you doing? I said, hey, happy late birthday. And he goes, thanks, man. Happy soon to be birthday to you. And I was like, wait, what the fuck? Like, how does he know that? 
Like it might be something that came up in conversation like a year ago, year and a half, two years ago. How would he possibly remember this? That should have been my clue in that you had prepared something for my birthday at Nerta. Yeah. So anyway, uh, yeah. So thanks for giving me a moment like that and then taking it away because Tom didn't actually. <laughs> Uh, no, that was that was awesome. That was that was an incredible moment for me. That whole nerdtacular experience, and especially the the uh, during DTNS uh, birthday presentation that you masterminded, Amos. That was an amazing, amazing moment of this year. Uh, but one thing topped that moment for me, and that was watching my oldest son graduate from high school, uh, and only three years late. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because he's <laughs> such a genius and he should have graduated when he was 14. Uh, no, um, no, he, he graduated high school this year and it was a, it was so awesome to, to watch him just in that accomplishment. Mm. Uh, I, it's, it's really, it's really difficult to explain that moment to someone that has not like watched their child do something, uh, really great. Uh, now, yeah, I mean, you can say, oh, it's just high school. Everybody's graduated high school. Uh, but but th- th- come on, tell me that was not a milestone in your life. Mm. It was amazing to watch it, uh, but it was also a little bit uh, like, oh, my God. I remember my own high school graduation like it was just a few years ago. Now I'm the old man that has a kid graduating <laughs> high school. It was like, holy crap. Mm. Uh, yeah, it was an interesting, interesting moment, but it was it was. For me, it was the moment of the year. It just w- watching, watching him walk across the stage and accept a diploma, and then just seeing the the look of accomplishment on his face was uh, it was it was incredible. That's awesome. All right, what All right, we, what, we, what else? Sorry, I was typing in the chat room. Uh, <laughs> and and Bimby said he didn't. Uh, he 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 got his GED, and I was reminding him that I graduated from summer school class of ninety five and a half. Um, right, right. So, uh, right, so let, let's let's hit historic moment real quick. Amos, you and I basically we've already we, kind of we were already it. talking about this. Yeah. The hashtag the, the, Me Too the Me movement. Too. Yep, right, all that yeah. stuff. Um, I don't know yeah. that we really need to get too much into it. That's no. just that's I don't. But but hold on, I I don't even know what this is. Like I have seen that this is a thing, mm. but I don't know what it means. Ah, okay. So it all began with the with the Weinstein scandal. Mm. Uh, with the do you, like how we were talking about with Louis C.K. and Kevin Spacey, right. like basically all of like men in power are being outed as being uh, uh, sexual assaulters, sexual harassers, uh, whatever, right? And then it involves so into is women. me too. The women that are standing up yes. and saying enough, the, or is it, it the it, guys that are saying, "No, no. oh shit, yeah, no. I did this also." Nope. No, no, it's, 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 no, it's, it's the, women the women sharing their stories with the hashtag Me Too. To, and not so that only other people women. Know I mean, it's alone. like probably ninety five percent women, but it's it's men too saying yeah, it's it's not all that, women. That's it, right. It's what That's led right. into the Spacey into the uh, all that yep. other. It, it kind of it, giving. It, it was the ground, the ground floor for everything. All the other stuff that happened with the sexual uh, harassment and assault issues to pile on top yep. of. Yeah, and it was it, it just the the whole Me Too movement has given a, uh, a a voice to those that didn't think they had one. It gave uh, it gave people courage in numbers. It it really it brought to light a larger. Well, it's like I said, with, you know, 2017 is the year that, you know, we kind of lift the veil from our eyes and say, like, look in the mirror. This is you, America. Uh, this was one of those things. Um, the, the Me Too movement has really uh, basically put it right in our fucking faces that we're a bunch of of uh, pigs and assholes, <laughs> basically. Uh, this is one of those Enough things. so and this is, that this it is stole change. the time cover from Donald Trump. Oh, wait. right. No, yeah. I, I have that wrong. I must have that wrong. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, me, me too is, is one of those, this is, we're witnessing social change right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, when I was, I when I was in high school, I used to think about like, cause I, I was really a, a little like borderline obsessed with the sixties and like all of the, the social change that happened there, whether it was, you know, sexual awakening, uh, civil rights, uh, you know, just all, 
all sorts of things, right? And uh, this year has been a lot like the 60s, I think. C- kind of the, uh, you know, the, the, this is what you are and you can be so much better. Like, you know, us as a country, you know, yep. this is what this is what you are right now. And you, you know, you can be so much better than what what you are right now. And Me Too embodies that. And this embodies kind of the the idea that, you know, you know, strength in numbers is not a fair or sufficient way of describing this, but more that you are not alone. Other people have experienced the shit that right. you have gone through. And yep. that is incredibly powerful. Yes. And hopefully enough to help the people who have had to deal with this and us as a society figure out how to get beyond this. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Uh, Richard, what did you, what did you have for historic? Like what was historic to you in 2017? Yeah, I went darker. Mm. Um, <laughs> This was this was an easy one for me. Um, I'm going to have a hard time talking about this. So, the horrible, horrible events that occurred in Vegas this year, when people were just massacred with an automatic weapon, a modified semi-automatic weapon made into an automatic weapon that is technically illegal that that someone who we all have to assume was out of his mind basically used to for no known reason or motivation mow down literally hundreds of people at a concert Hundreds of people injured and an unbelievable amount of people killed in what can only be described as domestic terrorism. And I, for me, the reason this is so hard is because I totally believe in what I think the Second Amendment was intended to protect for people to be able to protect themselves. And I am torn apart and, and horrified by how the lobbies who are supporting gun manufacturers and those who want to own guns that have extreme capabilities are basically protecting the rights of folks to make it easier the, in a way that makes it easier for people to own weapons like this or create weapons like this. And we have a president now who's quick to point the fingers at folks outside of our borders so much so that he's willing to build a wall to prevent people from coming into our country, even though all of it suggests that, that border is not our problem. And we are, we are not willing as a civilized society to sit down and talk about how we can responsibly manage the ability for citizens to own weaponry in a way that is not harmful to society. I just, I can't understand this. And I think it's one of the most horrific things that has happened to us in since nine eleven. Yeah. Um, I I am a gun gun owner. I have a sidearm that I carry with me when I travel. I have a twelve gauge shotgun that I keep under my bed for home protection against animals and people. And my family has a long line of owning guns, rifles, shotguns, pistols. Um. I don't have a problem with with the average person maintaining firearms, especially for defense purposes. 
Right. Um, the Second Amendment is very specific that it allows for a, a common defense, not against the government, to, to fight against oppression, basically. And I am a complete and total supporter that we should control guns the same way we control cars. They should be registered. You should be licensed to use them. You should be trained to use them. And every, every gun in America, you should know where it's at. Yep. At least at a, on a state level. I have to register a fucking drone. Right. Yeah. But nobody in the government knows the serial number of my nine millimeters sitting upstairs. And I think that's ridiculous. Yep. So, yeah, I'm, uh, that's, that's where I'm at with it. It's just yep. no, that's you, you guys, like all three of it. This is strange. Three people at the same place at the same time agreeing on this issue is astounding. Uh, no, we are all, I think, exactly on the same page with this. Yep. <clears throat> all right. So, uh, so let's finish things up with a little bit of a high note. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah, let's do that. Let's um, do that. <sighs> can't you put on here your personal podcasting milestone? Um, and this is a, uh, I mean, I, I find this pretty interesting, especially being the podcast that we are. Um, to talk well, about yeah. So I, well, I struggled with which, which what, yeah, with what I was going to choose as the highlight of this year for RMP, which there were many highlights. I would mm-hmm. argue. I decided to put cord killers on here because it was a dream come true basically to be on that show. Um, but before, before I even had a dream of our show becoming big, I had a dream of being on that show with Tom and Brian, Hmm. you know, and, and being in Brian's studio and being on cord killers was surreal to me. By the way, brought to uh, it was made possible for us by the ever lovely Jackie Hearn, who is currently in chat room. So thank you very much. In yes, chat. yes, thank you so much, Jackie. Uh, the, the, yeah, she we, we've she, already talked. Yeah. We've already talked about this before. She uh, greased Jackie. that wheel. Yeah, she made that happen. So yeah, <laughs> um, no, but Cord Killers was was phenomenal, and that was by a little bit. It was the highlight for me as a podcaster this year. Hmm. How about you, Richard? Yeah, so uh, because you were on Cord Killers, I gave you a whole bunch of shit. And uh, I, I think, actually, it was on the show, and Jackie caught that and uh, managed to get me on Cord Killers. So thank you, Jackie. I appreciate that. We'd love to be on again. That was fun. I um, my, my podcasting high of the year was quickly doused by adjustments that Libsyn made to their stats to make sure that they were compliant with industry expectations for numbers. And earlier this year, you know, I'm, I'm one guy and I produce a podcast about smart home technology and I am honored and, and lucky and excited periodically that it appears in the top 20 in its category in iTunes. And my numbers are not big from the perspective of other shows that appear in the top 20 in iTunes. I, and so my milestone this year was I, I hit 5k for the, like what people typically look for in Numbers, I, technically I hit 6K for what people t- typically look for, for numbers that advertisers care about, you know, downloads over a particular period of time for, per episode. Mm-hmm. And I I was quickly readjusted by Libsyn to uh, not quite half, but dramatically reduce numbers Jeez. this September and October as they changed their algorithms to... Uh, to more align with industry expectations for download uh, numbers. So, yeah. So that was a really cool moment. And then, okay, it's still cool, but not quite as cool. <laughs> right. Yeah. A little bit, a little bit of the rug being pulled out from under you. 
Um, yep. Yeah. If, if it matters, you're still way ahead of anything I've been involved with. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, my uh, my pod- podcasting highlight this year is starting. Let's talk about Thrones because um, it, it covers so many bases. One, Jenny Josephson's on it. She's amazing. <laughs> Two, I finally got Richard to do a podcast with me. Three, it's a it's a podcast that I'm actually sharing the experience with my 15 year old daughters because they're watching it for the first time and they're asking questions and we're kind of going through it. It makes mm-hmm. me uh, uh, pay a little bit more attention to not only plot lines but also um, critically look at it in a different light. Um, and it's also the first podcast that my wife has said that she doesn't mind me doing. So, <laughs> like, it hits on all fronts. I've got I've got a, 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 amazing co hosts. I've got a uh, uh, permission from the wife to do it. I've got family involvement <laughs> and I get to watch game of Thrones while doing it. Like it's, it's just, and, and it all happened like on Twitter. Best of all worlds. It all happened on Twitter because <clears throat> I just happened to throw out there or something and somebody saw it and it just kind of melded together within about two weeks. And here it is. It, it went live earlier today. Very cool. Yeah. So awesome. <clears throat> Notice we didn't mention Twitch. Just saying. Um, <laughs> Oh man, no uh, Twitch is Twitch is fine. Twitch all right, is what fine. Uh, what what final thoughts do you have on the year, Kent? The year that was uh, and it shall never be again. Yeah, no. Well, Richard started out by saying that 2017 was a shit show. Uh, we kind of wrapped it up saying that 2017 was kind of a "Hey America, look in the mirror" kind of year. Um, that pretty much for me sums it up. So, it's, so are you, are you saying 2017 was was a Flaming poo, ding dong ditch. Sure, kind of, <laughs> with a mirror. Title. <laughs> how, about, how, about, how about you, Richard? How, how would you uh, summarize twenty seventeen? Are you just still sticking with the shit show? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I will credit seventeen uh, twenty seventeen with getting me to watch the news more than I ever have, which has made me sadly aware of how biased all news that I see out there, uh, whether I like it or not is even the shows that I really enjoy have a very heavy bias. And that's so unfortunate because it's just so clear to me that people are hearing what they want to hear and they're not getting access to facts. Mm. And that's, I don't know how we get beyond where we are if we can't expose people to facts. If we can't agree on fact, I don't know we can really agree on anything else. Yeah. Yeah. This this is why I will, I did this a couple of months ago. I'm going to do it again. I wish everyone would use a news aggregator Mm. to get their news. Do not just go to CNN. Do not just go to Fox News. Do not just go to whatever your favorite place to go is. Use an aggregator. See both sides. See, and and that's the thing. Is there's not two sides. There's like 18 sides to every story. Mm. Get it all. Get use an aggregator, please. Yeah. Le- you might not get the full truth, but you'll get a hell of a lot more of the truth than if you're just using one source. Like I cannot stress that enough. Um, Jackie, Jackie Hearn in the chat says 2017 was her worst year she's had since 2008, but on the other, on the other side of that, she also quit drinking this year. So that's a huge accomplishment. Yeah, That's awesome. That is yeah, wonderful. good job, Jackie. Um, very cool. And, uh, uh, real quick, I mean, I, I, I do this a lot because they, they fucking deserve it, but our patrons, our contributors, the people that have sent us stuff, big voice, Jay and, and, uh, Mike beam and, and Willie Scott and, and, and bio Cal and these people that have done all this stuff to make our Twitch channel, our Patreon and our show what it is. Thank you so much for everything that you've done in 2017 for us. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I echo everything Amos just said, including our guests. Uh, Cause fuck, we've had some awesome guests that we probably didn't deserve. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh dude. We've, Oh my God. Go to dctvpedia.com. I think it is. I actually put the link in here. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, dctvpedia.com and look at our page, uh, go to the episode list and and just read through some of the names that are on that list. It is insane. We've had some amazing guests. Um, I want to, yeah, just, I think everyone, uh, this is 
God, this has been such an awesome, awesome year for Ritual Misery. Um, man, oh, oh, you know, oh, this is a perfect time to talk about the last 10 weeks, Amos. Mm. The last 10 weeks of this year. Yeah. We've been running a, what what did we call it? Uh, the the 10-week showdown title war. Some, something we were, like that, yeah. Yeah, we were we were encouraging our viewers, our Twitch viewers on twitch.tv slash ritual misery to basically compete for naming the show title. And we have a clear winner, Amos. The winner with three is Jotmon, aka M Beam in the Twitch chat. He has he has toppled Everyone else in the competition, he is our winner. He is going to receive a prize, which probably will not come to fruition until January mm. of 2018. So you're going to have to wait like a month. Mostly because mostly uh, I haven't designed it yet, let alone I got I to design it, purchase it, have it shipped to me, do whatever <laughs> I'm going to do with it, then send it to Kent so he can have his hand on it and then send it, <laughs> send it away. So yeah, but, but, so that, that's, that's awesome. Um, honorable mention, uh, very close. Second place was Fitz. Um, Fitz, I will probably, I'll, I'll hook you up with something. It's not going to be the grand prize, but you'll end up with something. Um, but yeah, thank you. Thank you for all the participants in that. Uh, man. Yeah. 2017 has been great for RMP and I cannot wait to see what 2018 brings. Um, how, how are we, how are we going to bring in 2018? Amos, is there a, like, well, are we gonna, so, are we gonna do anything? So a few years ago, Richard was like, Well, why am I following Tay Allen? And, <laughs> yeah. and, and valid, we and valid. we decided that's because you weren't on our year end episode and she's on our year start episode. So maybe you should mm-hmm. just do that. So it is now our tradition each year, as long as they allow it to happen, to have Richard on as our last episode of the year, or last guest of the year, and to have Tay on as the first episode, first guest of the year. So we yep. will have we will be bringing in the new year after the streamathon with our first regular episode on I think the third or the fourth um, with Tay Allen. So prepare for the awkward to occur. <laughs> yeah, uh, and, I and, think it's going to be quite yeah. awk. Ha ha ha, Richard! Speak that one out. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to follow her no more. Now you're leading in. You're the you're the, the opening yeah. Out. Yeah, yep. Yeah. I, I, you know, I always love the episodes that you have with her. And I think, if I remember correctly, I think we had some overlap when we did New Year's last year. Mm. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. New Year's is a, I'm trying to remember. New well, Year's is, so a, is, a, is a sickening buzz. Speaking of New Year's, we are having the New Year's Eve streamathon. It is the annual celebration of Diamond Club, where we come together. Uh, enjoy each other's company, enjoy entertaining podcasters and game streamers and uh, sometimes live music, uh, all kinds of just wonderful things. This year we are doing it all over Twitch where if you guys go to DC Streamathon on Twitch, so that's twitch.tv slash DC Streamathon, that is the central hub. It's got the schedule for the, the stream itself, it has the link to our wonderful charity, Donate Life America. Uh, it, it's going to be, it is going to be awesome, guys. It's a 27-hour straight stream with lots and lots of wonderful Diamond Club personalities are, are giving us a show. It's going to be so much fun, guys. It's only a few days away. I, I cannot wait. It is going to be a blast. Amos, are you, are you looking forward to opening and closing that show? I'm looking forward to opening it. <laughs> yeah, same, that, same. That last, last hour. <laughs> it was challenging last year to, uh, to close. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. Well, not to mention last year, I was not exactly of the best of health either. I was pretty sick. So um trying to make the best of it this year. Hopefully, I won't be uh, in, in, in the crud monster. Um, but, yeah, man, uh, this, this is something. We're, we're changing it up next year. We're going to make it a little, uh, expand it out a little bit, get some more involvement, hopefully. And uh, raise some more money, but most of all. And uh, again, that's that's 27 hours where no matter where you are in the world, when you celebrate your New Year's, you do not have to do it alone because we will be active. We will be in chat. Chat will be going the entire time. Um, and uh, yeah, reach out, man. Don't don't celebrate New Year's alone. 
Bring in the new year with the Diamond Club family. Yeah, it's absolutely. So twitch.tv slash DC streamathon for all of the fun. We're going to get Richard to do some stream next year. Hell yeah, we yeah, are. Yeah, I'm going to miss it this year, unfortunately. But I, I had a blast last year. Hopefully, I'll be able to do it next year. Mm. All right, man. So uh, where, where can people find you, Richard? Wait, 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 wait. Richard opened it. He should close it. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, so in, in, in let's case. see. Where can people find you guys, Kent? I am at RM underscore Del Noche on the Twitter. Uh, check me out. I'm always trying to be funny or informative or combination of the two on there. I am pretty much everywhere else on the internet, Del Noche. If you're a beer guy like me, you can find me on, on, on Untapped as Del Noche. Uh, check me out. Amos? Uh, uh, Ethan Kane on Twitter, E-T-H-A-N-C-A-I-N-E. And also, um, whenever I produce the episodes, I am doing it live on Twitch. So if you want to see how Ritual Misery goes from a raw recording, well, actually several raw recordings, into a finished product, uh, actually several finished products. If you, if you would like to watch that process... <laughs> Keep an eye out on the on the uh, twitch.tv slash ritual misery stream, uh, ritual misery, and I'll be streaming that probably Sunday sometime and make all that happen. And uh, we usually have pretty good conversations, not only about Twitch, but also about podcast production, audio production, and all the shortcuts I take because I'm I'm overall lazy. <laughs> I don't know about that. And you can find me on Twitter at Richard Gunther. Also, I, I host Home On, and as we've talked about many times in this episode. I am also one of the co-hosts from the new show, Let's Talk About Thrones. You can follow this show on Twitter, at Ritual Misery, and you can submit ideas in the subreddit at ritualmisery.reddit.com. You can find all of these links and more ways to support the show and give feedback at the website ritualmisery.com. Thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing the team to use your music. And thank you for listening. For Kent, for Amos, for me, and for you, this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. See ya! I, I, I don't have a line. I don't, I don't, I'm not using this word. <laughs> Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> oh man, so good. I I, I, I I love throwing you on the spot, Richard, and you stand it up and, and still still making it happen. That was awesome. Totally. Yep. I'm I'm really bummed that I missed the first cue. And actually, I missed the first cue so badly that um <laughs> you, we need to get it off of your recording because you're like, okay, let's start now. And I hadn't pressed record yet. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Oh, and you, you know I'm totally keeping that in, right? Because <laughs> this is the Ritual Misery Podcast. We celebrate yep. our mistakes. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Failure is the, the, the best teacher. Oh, my God. This was our longest show in a very, very long time. This happens yeah. every time I'm on the show. Yeah. I talk yeah. about We yeah. came in right at two hours. And if you can put up with this for two hours, then you should be coming by the streamathon this weekend. <laughs>